If it's a peach, is this Georgia? Look again. These peaches are ripening near Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. That's up next on Chefs of Field. It is the very taste of summer, the full, ripe, delicious, fresh peach. Pull it gently from the tree and take a bite. Or sit down in the Western World Center of Power, Washington, D.C., and pull yourself up to the table. Just a mile or two across town from the Capitol itself sits Blue Duck Tavern. What you see in this restaurant is you see a lot of true flavors. And the kitchen of Chef Brian McBride. What we wanted to do and create in this restaurant was where we could go out into the field, find the farms and the farmers and the growers that we wanted to work with, see how they raise their product, and then just bring their product and prepare it very simply here at the Blue Duck Tavern. On the menu, the names of farmers and fishermen mingle with the season's freshest ingredients. The real heroes are the people who grow the food. And uh, it gives you a sense of pride in your local community that you can, you can actually maybe even run a restaurant with, you know, buying from people within 150 miles of you. Oh, this, this became a farm. McBride goes back a long ways with one farmer in particular, Mark Toygo of Toygo Orchards, cultivating apples, tomatoes, melons, plums, nectarines, and peaches. It's food. It's food of the gods to me. You know, it's, it's what I like. Toygo's place sits in south central Pennsylvania, 100 miles north of the nation's capital. On so many levels, we have what farms do for the communities. We're stewards. We take care of what we got. You're pre preserving green space. We are keeping a family farm together. Out to the orchard, then, for summer's poetry itself, the juicy peach. Chef Brian's helpers are McBride's two, daughters Hannah and Miranda. Welcome to the farm. It's a nice day to come on out. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet. What do you want to do today? Uh, I like peaches. Is that it? Just peaches? Tomatoes, peaches. Uh, lima beans, you like this? Yep. How about pickled eggs, you like this? Uh, you want to pick some pickled eggs? Sure. sure. I never yeah. tried them, but okay. How about grits? You ever picked grits? What are they? Uh, he's pulling your leg, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We have peaches. We've got lots of peaches, and nectarines, and tree fruits. Farmer Mark Toygo grew up among these orderly rows of trees. As a boy, it was apples and peaches, peaches and apples. When he was old enough to drive, Mark went to Washington, D.C. to peddle fresh fruit out of the back of a pickup. In the late 1980s, Mark had begun to establish regular customers. One of the first of those was Chef Brian. We're going to check out some different varieties of peaches here today. How many different kinds of varieties do you have? We've got about 27 we're growing right now. Wow, these look nice. Yeah, these are Red Star. How do you know when they're ripe? We let them hang until they're nice and soft. Watch this. You can just pull it off there, and you can cut it. And oh. See how soft it is? And it should just break right away. That's a wow. free stone. But peaches, uh, you pick, and then you wait a few days, and then you pick again, you wait a few days. It's, you don't clean the tree off. So what we want to do is you guys reach inside here and then put your hands and try to find some soft fruit. When you think you have, just kind of put your palm all around and just give it a little twist and then let it fall down. You can put it in the, the box, and you guys can take a box back to the kitchen and play with it at the restaurant tomorrow. All right, and these will ripen up in the refrigerator. I think keep it in the fruit bowl till it's just about ready. These, these are just about as good as it gets for your early peach here. You got to wow. climb inside the tree, work those limbs around, get yep. both hands in there. Make sure you don't poke yourself in the eye. Right, and then, and then put them into the box. Don't drop them. That's pretty ripe, huh? That is nice and ripe. Mmm, this tastes really good. You like that? Mm -hmm. That's a good peach. We take these and we just cut them up with a little basil and vinegar and serve them with the pork chops right now. The peach was given the Latin name Prunus Persica because it was thought that the peach came from Persia. However, it originated in China, where it has been cultivated for at least 3,000 years. How long did it take a tree, a full tree to grow? This tree we planted in 2004. This is its first crop. From sapling to mature tree bearing fruit, a peach needs five years. 
With care, it will blossom for 25 years or more. The trees are generally small, no more than 15 feet in height. If you plant a, a pit, will another tree grow? It's possible. It's not likely. Looks like an animal or an insect already found this one. Uh, it might have been your dad. <laughs> yeah. And how do you contain all the insects and everything? Insects. Like we use uh, integrated pest management. You can see it all around the tree. We've got little uh, pheromones that we use. These right here, they, that's for a coddling moth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, throws off the, um, it throws off the breeding nature of the insects. Oh, yeah? So... It's a lot of that going on these days. Right. That's, that's, well, that's, the, that's what we appreciate, and we like yeah. to see that. No, no, mm -hmm. a, a complete lack of pesticides. Now, do you have harvesters, or do you hand-pick everything? Every, with all our, all our tree fruits, it's all hand-thinning, hand-harvesting, hand-pruning. So a row like this, you'll go through how many times in one week? About every three, four days, depending on what temperatures we're at. We're at a fairly cool day, you can see today, uh, but the fruit's ripening up. Do you harvest and ship everything, or do you let anybody come on, on, on your sites and, and pick their Just own? Just chefs. Chefs and little girls can That's come it. and pick. That's yeah. it, yeah. I saw everything that sign up front. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, That's why we pulled in. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, you know, we, you know, most everything we pick ourselves and we keep to ourselves. And, uh, <laughs> when nature gives you a soft, juicy, sweet peach, where do you sell it? Nearby, of course. Toygo sells his peaches at more than a dozen and a half farmers markets in and around the nation's capital. Sorry, you get it around here, or you just don't get it. This is a Formosa plum. It is super sweet, and it's just dripping with juice. So you said you had 27 different varieties planted right. here. Right. Is it because there's different flavors? We're constantly in a new variety, and that allows us to keep fresh fruit moving constantly. And does that extend the peach season because of the different varieties it go, does. grow di different times? We've got fruit starting in uh, early July, and we've and if we get one of those Indian summers, we're almost into October. You'll go into October with peaches? Yeah. See, that's good news for me. And then how much of the fruit actually goes to the farmer's markets? All of it. Well, if it's not going to farmer's markets, it's going to uh, grocers and chefs. Everything's for local consumption. Right. Which ones are good to eat? The like the smushy ones or the harder ones? Do you like smushy fruit or hard fruit? Uh, smushy. The smushy ones, then I'd say. Are you smushing them? No, I can just feel it. Okay. We can show you some different kinds of peaches. If you guys are into that, you want to see some yeah, different stuff. Yeah, donut peaches. They're my favorite donut yeah. peaches. And then we can see if he has donut. Chocolate. I remember when you brought home apples, peaches, and all those things. Well, let's go check it out. Who's gonna carry this box when it gets heavy? I will. You will? Yes. All right, we need a camel. Peaches are good for you. Despite their sugary taste, they're low in calories. One peach offers nearly a day's worth of vitamin C, is loaded with iron and potassium. When canned, peaches lose 80% of their vitamin C content, so it's best to eat them when they're fresh. You guys are gonna dig this. I got something pretty cool to show you. What do you think we got here? I mean, obviously they're peaches. What do they look like, though? Donuts. They're donuts? Like, that circular donut. Right. Yeah? Is it a famous donut peaches? Yeah, try these. These things are awesome. Mmm. That's good, huh? There's no acidity. It's like pure sugar. These are the boutique donut peaches. We put these out just for people to take. People know what they are? Oh, yeah. These are very in vogue. People love these. The donut. Yes, there is a variety of peach shaped like and called a donut. It's also named the Saturn peach because it looks like the rings of Saturn. What is a freestone peach? Go ahead, bite into that. Well, if you bit a little further, you'd see it would break away from the, the, the pit. So it's freestone. In fact, that, that's right. You can cut it, pull it apart. There you go. And then we have a lot of varieties within each kind. Mm. What are the varieties that have all the fuzz? It's like the all Alberta. You like those? Mm -hmm. We love those. School. Yeah, those are like the peaches it. that we used to have when we were kids. Yeah. They're still around. Why do the peaches have all these fuzz on them? Like all yeah, right, yeah, that's kind of neat. Huh? It's kind of like why you got fuzz on you. It protects you, it protects the fruit. And just like hair, and peach has hair, and that's kind of what keeps moisture, it wicks the moisture away from the fruit. That's cool. So that's cool, isn't it? Protection. Mm -hmm. It's a rough world out here for these guys. <laughs> why do they have these streaks? That's where the limb laid across it, so if you were to see it, it would kind of be like this. Oh. That's pretty cool, huh? That's kind of cool. The so carotenes then, come out of there, so and they're the, activated. This part is like almost a tan for a peach? Mm-hmm. It's where it's got its sun exposure from. This side was on the side that was up against the leaf. 
and it didn't get as much sun. Let's fill this box because we have to cook tomorrow. What are you making? We have a nice free range chicken that nice. we're gonna maybe roast with fresh peaches or nectarines. Mm -hmm. It's kind of beneficial being short because you can get up underneath the tree and I, I'm not so inclined to do it. In a perfect world, we would hire kids to come out here and pick fruit for us, but they complain too much. They complain too much? Yeah, pull them out of the schools and put them in the trees. I do it. How much will you pay us to? Well, there you go, see? It's all about the pay. Close to 15 cents an hour, and it comes with benefits. All the peaches you can eat. All the peaches you can eat. There you go. The first peach trees in North America were brought here by European settlers more than 300 years ago. They thrived in the middle Atlantic climate and then were spread around the colonies by roving Native American tribes. There are hundreds of varieties of peaches, and as careful as the orchardist may be, there's still a surprise now and then, a mystery tree. It appears out of nowhere. All right, so we're gonna see this uh, famous peach tree? It's, it's Wilbur the Wonder Tree, yeah. Ah. It's just an anomaly, it's, I, I think it's very cool. And we may have something special on our hands, I don't know, take a look in here. Look at this, that peach is the size of your head. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a softball. They are ready, they are just plum ripe, so to speak. So can we've we got a nice, one? yeah, why not, right? You can tell me what you think. You can be our first customer. That is a big peach. Wow. I can see the and you can, like you can eat that like a wedge of watermelon here. Mm -hmm. Eat it from the inside out. Mm. That's good flavor, huh? It's uh, very hot, warm. Hot, like warm. Hot sitting in the sun? Uh huh. Mmm. That's a good peach. Each one, you don't know what kind it is, right? No, not a clue. Unusual size and shape on it. Makes you believe it's an old variety, but I don't know. You could be experiencing history, girls. What do you call a peach without fuzz? A peach tree with a mutation. We've seen some donut peaches, some yellow peaches. Now we've got something else to show you. You guys, come on in, belly up. You know what these are? Nectarine. That's right, very good. And they're in the peach family, they are a peach. Some people think that they were crossed with a plum, but it's not true. They're just a peach, really, without uh, fuzz. You asked a question earlier. They're hard, right? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be hard? Or they're not firm. as juicy, it looks like. No, they're not, they need a little more time. Do you like it, fruit a little more acidy? You know, you see how it's got a little more acidic to it, a little twang. You can feel it tighten up in the back of your jaws, right? Yeah. Good fruit. It Egg greens are good in salads. Yeah. That's what we there see them. They're good because they go good with vinaigrettes because they have depth of flavor uh -huh. and they're a little bit more complex than just the fruit, the sugar, you know, the sweetness. So, and because of the, we can use them when they're still a little bit firm. I find a lot of people who uh, eat the nectarine because they just can't get their head around the fuzz on a peach. The modern white fruit, or the white fruit that we grow here, is all subacid, meaning it's very low in acid. So the sugars of the bricks is, appears much higher. You want to see some plums? Okay. Yeah, we've got some Santa Rosa plums, and we've got some uh, cardinal plums. We've got a lot of plums, so we can check it out. And you guys can eat some tree ripe plums. We're really good. How do you organize all the fruits? You got me. I walk around, around lost here all day. That's similar to what I do. <laughs> right now, there are more than 21,000 fruit trees on this orchard on 450 acres. Next year, there will be more. The Toygos add different trees, different fruits every year, tending to keep the land out of development, out of condos and McMansions. And how long has this been uh, a family orchard? My, my folks bought it in the late 60s and then converted it to a fruit farm. Why did they do that? Did they have uh, experience with that before? Or my, dad liked apples. To do? My, my dad liked apples. My dad liked apples. I think that was the greater part of it all, you know. Oh, Johnny Appleseed thing going yeah, on? I guess so. You know, he, he knew what he wanted to do, and he set out to do it, so. Here we go. Sure. There you guys know what these are? Plums. Oh, good one. Good one. Now, guess what kind? Uh, fruit plums. Dad? Honey plum? These are Asian plums. It's called a satsuma. Satsuma plums. Ah, uh -huh, see? That'll sound These are kinda, really nice. See, that'll sound fun on the menu. If you say satsuma on your menu, then everyone will order it. If you just say it's plum. more than just a plum. Right. That's right. It, it's a variety. How many plums do you get off one tree? 200? 218. Exactly, 218. See, sure. see that? Unbelievable. Looks like a blood plum. <laughs> yes, I think satsuma means blood plum. Does that what it means? Yeah, in Cantonese. Plums like this are great. Are great for breakfast. A plum crisp right around this time of season. You know, if blueberries were still in, you know, we'd do a nice plum and blueberry crisp for dessert, huh? Mm -hmm. Just a little sugar and a topping and just bake it in the oven, let all those juices come out and spill over the sides. It'd be really good. And then, you know what? This would make an excellent plum sauce for duck. It 
looks icy on the outside. What does that show something? Or? Mm, you know, it's kind of like the peach fuzz. It's also its own natural protection. It forms on the plum very early in its life, and it stays there. It's like a, a resin, if you will. And when we, you rub it off, it comes back. It, it'll permeate. It's in the skin, but it will keep coming out correct. But it, right. right now, if you see it like this, it just polishes. Because a lot of times you will wash them and put them in a bowl and let them sit there, and then you come back mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. what's going on? No, but they're awesome like that, huh? Great flavor, huh? Dad likes plums. Nice and sweet. Dad likes plums. Can I, I have think. another one? No. You can have as many as you like. You guys want to uh, go check out some watermelons, sure. cantaloupe, stuff like that? I like watermelons. Do you? On a hot day? Is that stuff cooler than like plums? Well, if you had to live on one thing, plums or watermelon? I don't know. Watermelon. Watermelon? All right, let's All right, go check let's them go. out. Let's go take a look. Let's go check them There's out. There's more to Toygo than fruit trees. There are berries, tomatoes, greens, and gourds. Diversity good for the land, good for the farm, and very good for the chef. These are my favorite because they don't have seeds. Chef, chef is just too lazy to pick seeds anymore. Exactly. So we grow uh, some red melons, yellow melons, seedless melons, seeded melons, long melons, skinny melons. And guys, I think, I think these are yellow dolls. And I never saw a yellow doll in my entire life until I moved to Washington, D.C. And like 15, 18, 20 years, I can't remember, when we first started doing business with Mark, he delivered yellow dolls, and I was like, well, what is this? And I cut it open and ate it, and you know what? They're the best melon I've ever had. Yeah. So you don't have to cut open every melon. How do you tell what's a yellow I'm not very good at that. So you uh, just he cuts them open. He cuts <laughs> them all open. I just stay out here and cut melons till I find a good one. There's guys a lot better at it than me. Over there, that looks like a good one. No, nope. let's check it out. Yeah, look at that, yeah, right? See? See that way that slipped off there so easy? Who's going to cut it? I will. This is going to be good. Mm. Mm. Well, that's nice and sweet, huh? That's, that's a summertime. They're really juicy. It takes a tough man to make a juicy melon. I've never heard that before. Is that the best watermelon you ever had? Mm-hmm. By far, right? I'm impressed. All right, let's take a look for a yellow one. There you go. Get down in there. That's a little bit off. Ah, look at that color. Whoa. Yeah, it's like, like the sun. I wonder how it tastes. OK. Oh. Ooh, Good. there you Good go. catch. I love this color. It's too cool. It's a marker color. That's funny. It's a marker color. Yes, a marker color. Take a marker and draw a picture. Make some art. Or close your eyes and take a big taste, and you are deep in the wonderful art of the farmer. OK, guys, what we're going to make is a roasted chicken dish in a wood-burning oven. And you know what? Instead of doing something sweet with the peaches, we're going to cut up the peaches. We're going to mix them with some banana peppers and bay leaf and garlic and shallots and oil and rosemary. And we're going to roast that in the oven, too. We're going to pour that over the chicken when it's done, and we're going to, we're going to serve it like that. So we're going to start our chicken in the oven first. You'll see the chicken's been cooked us a little bit. We've cooked it for about maybe about six hours at a real low temperature of 180 degrees, just till the internal temperature reaches about 140. All right, so it's just barely cooked, but that slow cooking method is going to let us cook it in a wood burning oven and let it brown up and turn nice and crisp and have it cooked all the way through in a short period of time. What if someone wanted to cook it and they didn't have a wood burning fire? Well, then they would take, they would take their chicken from raw and they would cut it up just like we did, did, right? And we have a leg and we have a thigh and we have a breast, okay? And they would cut that up and then they would roast that in their oven like at 350 degrees for about two, maybe about two hours. And then maybe lower the temperature down to about 250 towards the end so that the chicken cook long and slow. But I still want you to sprinkle salt and pepper on it because we always put salt and pepper, right? Because salt draws out flavor and pepper adds flavor. And we're going to pop these in the wood burning oven and the wood will take care of our whole job for us while we make the rest of the dish. So we're going to cut up a nice peach here and Hannah, you're going to put a little bit of olive oil into the bowl. Oh yeah, that looks good. That's great. All right, Miranda, go ahead. There you go. And we're gonna add one more peach. And we're gonna leave them big and chunky too. Once again, we're gonna have more of a rustic style. Hannah, you wanna throw those in there and toss them around? Now, Hannah, what I want you to do, to those peaches, just go ahead and throw in some fresh rosemary that we cut from the garden. Do you take it off this Nope, stem? I want you to throw it in halt this time. You can throw it all in. Throw the thyme, the rosemary, throw it all in with the peaches. Here's some shallots, garlic, right? So go ahead and take some of this and put it in your bowl as well. And then take two or three of these fresh bay leaves. I always break them like that and take a smell. They're really strong. They taste good. They make everything real perfumey. These are the banana peppers. Hot. These are hot, right? Spicy. Mm -hmm. 
And so, tastes better when they're cooked. You know what? Just for a little bit of spice, we're gonna throw just a little bit in. If you mix all that up, we're gonna get another pan ready, and we're gonna throw that in the oven. All right. With all this stuff, taste good together. Mm -hmm. We're gonna bake it all together, exactly. And we're gonna split it between the two more pans, and we're gonna add just a touch more olive oil. All right, how's those colors look? That looks good, actually. That looks, that looks like I would eat it right just the way it is. We're gonna take this nice little mixture that we have, and we're gonna throw that in the wood burning oven to cook the same time as the chicken. The best part about cooking like this is, while you're waiting, you can finish off your salad, have a glass of lemonade or a glass of wine, talk about our day yesterday, and have some fresh peaches. Okay, now we're gonna pull our chickens out. Okay. You can still see the salt. You guys see, look, don't touch it. Take wow. a look, see, our peaches are cooked. Our onions and shallots are done. Look, our fresh herbs, they gave off all their oils. So everything's intermingled into wow, the dish. Wow, the peaches, okay. those great skin. All right, and if you guys remember not to touch it, I'm just gonna put it here for now. And this chicken's called a kosher king. And it comes from Four Story Hill Farms in Pennsylvania. These chickens are raised on figs. Why are they raised on figs? Well, like, the, the time of year that, they, that they're pulling, that they're raising these chickens, figs are also in season, okay? And the, these particular chickens like figs. And the figs in their diet helps to give them a nice, plump, juicy, sweet flavor. What is this part of the chicken? That's the chicken thigh. The presentation is gonna be important, so once we get it into the casserole, we're gonna take a look at how it looks. All the flavors are gonna melt together. The peaches are gonna start to taste like garlic and rosemary, but they're still gonna contain a little bit of their sweetness. The way you guys are laying it out is great. Smells good. Smells really good? Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the garlic. idea. You want your food to not only look good and to taste good, you want it to smell good. You wanna be able to stand behind your food. You wanna know that your food came from a safe place, that the people who raise your fruit and your vegetables, even in this case, your chickens, you wanna know that they took care of everything really well. That's why we went and visited Mark yesterday, because you could see, you know what I mean, how well they take care of everything that they have. So how do you think about the way that looks? looks that good. smells great. Peaches and garlic, I think this is a new combination that we're gonna use. Will you hide? And Hannah, yours, yours looks really good too. To finish this dish off, I think we need to add a little sauce. What we have here, right, is we have our coffee thermos, except for there's not coffee in here. There's chicken jus in here. It's almost like a soup that you would pour over your chicken. Go ahead, pour it all around. This is your sauce. Oh, that's good, that looks good. See how it is, it's smoking hot, and when it comes to your table and I put it right in front of you like this, what are you gonna say? Wow. Oh, I like that. That's the, that was exactly what, we're, what I was looking for. Mm, that it smells, smells good. Really, yeah, really good. Like that does smell good. That looks good. That smells good. And I would easily pay for that. So would I. So would you? <laughs> Whose money are you going to use? Mine? Yeah. All right. Can we eat it? You can eat it. And you can eat it just like we serve it in the restaurant. What we do is we put this in the center of the table. And our customers, they can eat just like they're at home. So what they do is, is they have their food in the center. Right? And they say, oh, I want a chicken leg with a little rosemary. And let me have some of those peaches. Maybe a shallot for this and a little garlic for my bread. And oh, let me get that thigh. Ooh, a peach would taste good. Mm, a roasted I think peach I'll get is good. A salad. Ooh, let me get a chicken leg. I can't wait to eat. Now it looks great. Oh, it's a good chicken. You can taste all the peaches with it. They taste like they go with the chicken. This is like a market menu where you just go out to the farmer's market or you go out and you see Mark at his place, gather what you want, and then you kind of think in your head what's going to go together good today. Yeah, it's good.